Okay, welcome everyone. My talk is about uh, GSM burst transmission in the radio. And uh, first, who I am, it is the same, uh, the same points as on uh, House Computer Congress. But yeah, I'm author of uh, part uh, of A probe. Years ago, I was author of it, and then I. Uh, Changed it into GRGSM and built some stuff uh, uh, around it. And uh, I'm also author of uh, multi RTL, uh, uh, a software tool for synchronizing uh, RTL SDR uh, devices in time domain. I'm professionally working at uh, Warsaw University on radar signal processing. I would like to put some day in here uh, also a small com com contributor. Uh, I'm not there yet. I'm still in the process of uh, uh, transferring GRGSM project into a small com umbrella. But I would also also want uh, to do some uh, stuff on things that are, are more of interest to the to the rest of Osmocom community. So, Maybe in in near future, I hope. What uh, is it for uh, this GSM burst transmission? The main motivation was uh, adding uh, uh, transmit side to GRGSM, so we can marry it together with Osmocom BB and make it uh, uh, GRGSM a uh, uh, burst transceiver for Osmocom BB, so it can work not only on Motorola, uh, but also on SDR devices. And uh, it could be also adapted uh, to work uh, as a BTS transceiver, but I haven't done that, uh, done that yet, and there is Osmocom, uh, Osmo TRX, so there is no much uh, motivation for it. It also could be used for testing uh, receive site of GRGSM that is already uh, already in there. So the requirements that we set for the uh, burst transmission were following uh, the input uh, uh, of the transmitter we have burst with GSM uh, tap headers and what is interesting uh, in them is uh, mostly frame number at the output, we, want, uh, we wanted to get G uh, GMSK modulated uh, RF signal uh, that is synchronized with uh, uh, received signal. So we have, uh, there is working somewhere the receiver and it observes uh, the downlink and it can inform uh, the uplink part, the transmit part uh, about uh, about uh, frame current uh, frame structure, current uh, frame position, and uh, the uplink should uh, transmit uh, CDMA frames in three time slots, uh, three time slots late, later than uh, it is in uplink. And uh, what we also had to do was assuring the, the signal that we are transmitting are not corrupted in so some way, the, look like GSM uh, signal. And uh, at this moment, we, uh, we didn't have ambition to make it, uh, uh, to implement frequency hopping. We wanted just it to work on single frequency. So this is the signal that we wanted to, to get maybe beside this 8PSK modulated part in the middle. <laughs> so this, this is the envelope of the, on, on, of the signal. And then why to use GNU radio for this? Because many people uh, might probably think that it's very inconvenient to, to, to do this. And I want to uh, maybe, uh, maybe update them about uh, GNU radio features that maybe they don't know about. So uh, why GNU radio? Because it's modular, so for example, if I need to design a, uh, a filter, I can use 
uh, a routine that was implemented by someone else. I don't have to reinvent uh, the wheel. If I want to do filtering, resampling, modulation, demodulation, uh, coding, decoding, there's a lot in there. Uh, if someone doesn't want to know what is inside uh, inside a block, he doesn't need to. It uh, he needs to know what's on the input, what's on the output, what the block does. But uh, internal uh, code is knowledge of internals is not uh, not needed to to do something if someone doesn't want to. The, the architecture of software created this way is maybe. Uh, quite uh, clear because we have blocks connected to the, together. The disadvantage is uh, that it might impose some limitations, uh, but probably not as uh, as much as many people think. Some things might even be not uh, possible without uh, extending the runtime. For example, I would like to have. Uh, ability to uh, reconfigure flow graphs of GNU radio in uh, without stopping them but then maybe I, I should send the patches myself <laughs> and uh, so basically when people think about GNU radio they think uh, about uh, sources of uh, of samples uh, some blocks processing them and uh, and sinks and the basic object that is uh, that is processed is is single sample and uh, there is no way to distinguish uh, between them for example to do some some packets with it so uh, what GNU radio blocks do is taking some samples uh, at the input applying some processing function for example adding uh, inputs from uh, two signals from two inputs and write, uh, writing to the output. And uh, what uh, GNU Radio uh, runtime assures is uh, uh, that it will be done synchronously on two inputs. The, the number of samples that get in uh, is the same. But uh, this way of processing uh, streams have some limitations. For example, packets are probably not, not possible this way. Uh, there is no signaling uh, from upstream uh, upstream blocks to downstream blocks of some events that have occurred. Uh, no sending data upstream, so no loops and no control mechanism without some without any any hacks into the uh, into the framework. So over the years, uh, GNU Radio uh, evolved, and some mechanisms were added, like uh, for example, stream tags. And what are stream tags? It's metadata that is attached to uh, to given sample in the in the stream, and it travels across multiple uh, blocks, and it can be used to send information from upstream blocks to down, downstream blocks about, for example, uh, current frequency that is uh, that we are receiving on current time for given sample and other stuff. And uh, it also can be used to modify uh, other blocks behavior at particular at particular moment. For example, changing frequency shift at precisely given moment and uh, changing resampling rate and so on and so on. So this is how it uh, looks like we have, uh, we have, uh, for example, we have a stream of samples. The block sees the stream of samples through, through a window. So at, at a given call of its work function, it uh, sees some limited number of, of samples. And inside of this window, it can also see stream tags. So, for example, we can um, imagine that uh, there is uh, a tag uh, with length of a packet. So we can get uh, packets th this way. But it's quite inconvenient. You can implement one block uh, this way, but if you want to implement more of them, 
you have to deal always with problems like like this that the burst can be only you can have only beginning of burst only end you can get combinations of them you can get uh, middle of the the burst so if you have to implement this way one block it's not a problem but uh, if you have to implement this way each block processing uh, packets it's very inconvenient so what was introduced were uh, later was target streams and uh, streams are uh, packetized in here with use of stream tags and uh, these tags mark uh, start of each packet each uh, and th uh, this mark is uh, packet length tag that is attached to the beginning of each each packet there is and there are no spaces between packets so if you violate this uh, this rule uh, bad things might happen in, in the radio it might stop working and uh, yeah and what is assured by the runtime in radio runtime is that uh, one block is processed in whole at the time so advantages is that uh, it uses um, this mechanism uses uh, buffers pre-allocated by uh, GNU radio so you don't have to care about memory and the and it's quite efficient and you don't have to check multiple conditions of packet locations in input buffer Bro blocks are therefore simpler but it has also some disadvantages like uh, packet size limit it's limited by the maximum size of of burst and uh, packet headers can be sent this way but then you have to remember that sample from this to this is for example CRC or something like this and uh, it's it's not convenient and it's basically a hack of uh, uh, stream uh, stream processing that works very well in the radio to change its purpose to, to something else Yeah, we are recording. <laughs> yeah, mind. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, another disadvantage is that if you pass them through a rate changing block, yeah, the length tag doesn't get adjusted. Yeah, you have to adjust it, uh, which means that you screw up your s your your stream uh, immediately. And uh, if uh, if the block has a rate change that is not easily predictable, you can't even. Yeah, fix it you cannot. At all. Yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, you're right. So there is uh, another mechanism that is well fitted for sending packets, and it's uh, called message passing. And it's a mechanism to send asynchronous uh, messages between blocks, and they are in uh, PMT format. It's uh, polymorphic uh, type also stream tags are in this uh, in this format and uh, it's very flexible but it also has uh, at least for me quite inconvenient uh, interface uh, <coughs> taken from from lisp for example for you don't have pair you have cons <laughs> this this is funny but you can get used to it and it's uh, completely independent of uh, streams of samples and each block can have uh, stream inputs, stream outputs, uh, message inputs, message outputs. There is no no such limit. There are no limits to this. Uh, yeah, and uh, it can be used for for many things, like setting parameters of uh, another block by uh, by given block, sending packets, and there is even some special format. Uh, uh, in the radio for for this that some some blocks recognize and it's called PDU it's a pair or cons uh, with header which is dictionary with uh, header fields in given formats like integer uh, 64 or something like this uh, and uh, there is content 
and this is binary blob. Yeah, so, so, ah, and one interesting thing is that with message passing, you can easily uh, implement uh, loops that are not possible uh, for some reason uh, with stream processing. So here is example of uh, a loop that, that I use uh, in GRGSM for, for receiving for uh, frequency correction. The GSM receiver block uh, uh, processes uh, frequency correction burst. It computes uh, uh, frequency of them. And then GSM uh, clock offset control blocks uh, block uh, compute on based on this uh, clock frequency offset and updates uh, the, this block GSM input adapter. It's, it has inside uh, frequency shifting block and uh, sample rate uh, changing block that uh, both of them are controlled by stream tags inside. These, these messages are then converted to, to stream tags and uh, the stream tags control, uh, control the, the other blocks. Uh, okay, so the message passing has some uh, interesting advantages, like it's very flexible. Uh, you can send any di data you like you with PMTs. Uh, it's well suited for package representation, and you can easily distinguish uh, different parts of packets with, with this. But it has also advantages. It's asynchronous, so if you have two parallel branches in the radio that uh, uh, that has messages in it, and you connect them together in some block, you have completely non-deterministic uh, order of this uh, of these packets in this in this block, and uh, there is also no back pressure of one block on another. And what I mean here is uh, that. Uh, one block is receiving messages, but he's got too much of them, and he would like to say to another, hey, I got enough, stop sending uh, to me, and there is no such uh, mechanism. So, for example, message source can produce any number of messages and don't care if someone is able to, to receive them on time. And there is no pre-allocated space in memory. Uh, memory as far as I know, is uh, allocated each time you create uh, PMT. So it might be some limit for uh, in the fast path I if you try to use it, for example, to, to send uh, 100 mega samples uh, inside of messages. It might be somewhat limiting. If you, I don't have uh, ambition to describe everything in here. I just wanted to say that maybe if you think that the radio sucks, maybe you should rethink it. Maybe it's not that bad. <laughs> so, but if you want to know more, uh, go and see the talk by Tom uh, Rondo, stream tags, PDUs, and message passing. Uh, uh, yeah, how to transmit burst with GNU radio? So this is uh, this is the the. The whole secret is uh, you get, uh, you have uh, in the radio a block representing uh, USRP uh, transceive chain, and you can send a tag stream to it. it this block itself is not a tag stream, but it understands uh, tag streams uh, when, you, uh, when you fill packet, uh, it's TSB tag name. And you can you, you should put uh, packet length uh, tag name in in there, and from this moment it will start understand uh, tag streams. And in tag stream you can attach uh, to the beginning of each burst uh, transmit time, so USRP know uh, exactly where it should send something, and uh, what. Uh, what does it on its side is uh, UHD timed commands uh, uh, mechanism that is implemented in in USRP and in the driver. So here I've got demo. So 
what I got in here. Again, I've got signal source, regular uh, one taken from the radio. I've got uh, burst tagger block. I, I've written it. It just adds periodically uh, tags to the to the stream, so you can mark where uh, where tags uh, where bursts are starting and uh, when they should be transmitted. You can. Uh, you can define how long should be burst and how long should be uh, idle duration between them. Uh, idle duration, yeah, and uh, I am already running it. Okay, so here is what I, I'm sending to, to UHD block, to USRP. And here you can see the TX time uh, tax values and burst length. And on the receive side, what I would like to get is uh, is uh, bursts that have equal length with idle parts. But here you can see that uh, that is not the case <laughs> somehow. And I can and I can fix it. I will connect uh, attenuator to the transmit port. Let's see what happened. It's fixed. This is uh, this is strange thing. I still don't know why it is, but uh, I know where where it happens, and uh, I can fix it with connecting, for example, one dB attenuator. Uh, so so it's not such a problem for me. I don't have much motivation to look uh, for the for the source of it, and yeah, this it happens only when you are trying to transmit something and uh, you are trying to transmit burst and uh, receive continuously at the same time. I don't know why, it's only a feature of uh, B200 uh, devices and uh, as I said it can be uh, worked around with, uh, with, uh, with attenuator and if you connect some antenna that doesn't have any connection between active pin and uh, the, uh, the ground of the, the port, uh, you will see also this. I don't want to transmit junk in here, but you would see it as well. Here we are just observing uh, cross talk between the transmit and receive port. And then, is everything fine now? Let's check. I'm now adding some uh, zero, zeros at the end of uh, of the burst with, with use of burst shaper, uh, burst shaper block. It adds 10, 10 zeros at the end. And let's see this. Did I stop? Slow graph, no. <coughs> okay, so this is what we would like to transmit. This is the burst at the end. It has uh, zeros that I added uh, in there, the padding. And this is what we receive. So this is the back of previous burst. And uh, probably it's uh, effect of uh, group delay that is not taken care of. So you should do it manually yourself. And uh, how to take care of it, uh, you can just add enough zeros. For example, in this case, it's 20 and you, you won't see it anymore. Let's try it. Yeah, much, much better, but you have some delay. And yeah. Let me stop this. And uh, it appears for every USRP that I have seen, maybe for X300 uh, devices. Uh, I haven't seen uh, the, the, this, uh, this uh, tile of a burst at the beginning. But uh, there is still a missing part of burst. So you should 
at zeros anyway. So now, uh, use how to use GNU Radio to build a GSM transmitter. So we have uh, interface. It receives bursts from somewhere, and it sends uh, downstream uh, bursts with frame numbers and uh, time slot numbers. Then there is important block, very important block that uh, converts uh, frame numbers and uh, time slot numbers to transmit uh, time uh, tags. After that, we have modulator that does GMSK modulation and it takes at the input uh, PDU messages with bursts and, uh, and uh, uh, at the header of this PDU message it has, uh, for example, uh, transmit, uh, transmit time tags. This is the most important uh, thing. No, and at the end you have SDR hardware and at the moment it's only USRP that, is support, that supports stream tags. So I could put USRP in here. So modulator. Uh, I wanted to use only GNU Radio uh, blocks for implementing it, just to check if uh, I can do it. There are also some uh, adaptation blocks in here that I uh, put on this on this picture. So first, you have a block that uh, changes messages uh, to tag stream. Then uh, there are blocks that are, that are doing uh, differential encoding, and I found out that differential encoding uh, in the as GSM means it is differential decoder as the radio uh, means it uh, and its output has to be uh, has to be then changed to bipolar representation and then I have to adapt uh, output of that block to uh, to the input of uh, GMSK modulator block that does the GMSK modulation with oversampling of uh, 4. So as uh, Sylvain said, uh, after changing the rate, I have to correct the uh, pack, uh, packet length value and there is a block that uh, does it, but uh, it's, it can't probably do it din dynamically. Uh, and uh, at the and I have a burst shaper block that takes care about uh, this thing that I have shown. It adds uh, zero at the back of burst and uh, it also does power ramping. Maybe not very good at the moment, but yeah, but it can uh, be uh, updated and do it according to the spec. <laughs> so then we have this uh, frame number to uh, TX time co conversion and I have to think about it uh, for, for a bit. So let's start uh, from something uh, uh, general and how to convert one time in general to another one. Is let's uh, do it on an example. For example, we have uh, some counter some number of samples and we want to convert it to, to time, and this time can be uh, time since uh, turning on USRP. <coughs> so we have known uh, NX and unknown TX, and we can put it on a plane and uh, draw a line through it. This is how the one converts to another. The conversion ratio is uh, TS, it's, uh, uh, it's period of sampling. And how to convert, uh, how to find the, the value. So let's start uh, from capturing some other point, uh, some uh, reference uh, point. And it's uh, number of samples, NREF, and, uh, and precise time attached for this sample, and it's period. Ref. And then we can add, uh, we can do some simple math uh, to, to, to find Tx. So Ts is a tangent of the, of the angle in here. 
we can uh, write a formula for it and then uh, derive uh, tx from this. Okay, but uh, in conver con converting of frame numbers to, to time, there is problem that it's number modulo hyperframe. So this is, this is the number in here, uh, and it uh, frame numbers are repeating every three about three point half hour. So it's not that you can ignore it; it can it can happen. And uh, computing unambiguous difference between two frame numbers is therefore uh, quite uh, hard if the distance is uh, higher than hi hyperframe. Uh, divided by two. So what would it be great to have is something like this, the, the straight line. So we can capture the reference point and uh, compute uh, the time. But this is what we have uh, really. And, uh, and uh, the, there is ambiguity in, in here. So how to resolve it? We can uh, we can, for example, track time, and it doesn't have to be very, uh, very precise. We can use, for example, uh, PC clock for it because it won't sleep that much. Maybe uh, hyperframe over two, it's over one hour, so it would take some time to uh, to have such such error uh, of time between USRP and uh, PC, and. Uh, we can use this, uh, and this this uh, time hint should be estimate, for example, of uh, our uh, tx uh, value that we want to find out, and it's uh, therefore quite close to 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 the point that we are searching for. So this is what we have. We can move uh, the reference point close to the close to the point that we are looking for and compute uh, using similar formula uh, as previously. I added here h, uh, uh, h which is length of hyperframe uh, over, uh, over 2 just to support the situation that we have time hint that is uh, in future in in comparison with uh, with the uh, point that we are looking for and uh, yeah we can easily add here uh, support for time slot numbers so the naming con con convention is the same as previously in here tsx is time slot number uh, that we want to convert uh, ts ref is reference uh, time slot number and TS period is period of time slot. Yeah, the, the, the next talk will be quite short. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you don't have to uh, worry about this schedule. <laughs> and yeah. But I'm close to the, to the end. So where to get the reference point from? It's uh, uh, taken from uh, receive site uh, of USRP together with Eric's time tags that are sent uh, by USRP whenever uh, some change of time happen. And the uh, receive chain of GRGSM tracks uh, sample numbers and Eric's time tax it converts them uh, one to another and uh, can add uh, time to uh, to frame number and send the pair downstream and this pair is basically our reference point that is used for for con conversion and uh, yeah this is this is how it works and here I have another demo Let's start network in the box. I'll connect cable in here that is missing.
Okay. And I will start uh, the demo. So it receives uh, the signal. You can see some messages uh, decoded on the output. And what I do in here is that uh, this, this part is receiver. Then I using the output just to trigger generation, generation of access boosts whenever uh, frequency correction burst is received and there is another branch for uh, reference frame and numbers and time and here there is a transmit chain so adaptation block in this case are outside of uh, modulator and let's see what happens Peter, I'm sorry for interruption. I, I think it should be noted that we don't actually transmit anything. We use cables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there are cables, so nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah. So what happens? Uh, yeah, if we get so many uh, random access uh, messages, uh, bursts that uh, that there is no enough uh, channels to allocate traffic. Uh, channels in this case. Yeah, uh, th this was the the first test, and uh, this is what what happened. I didn't intend to to do it, but it was imminent anyway. And yeah, this is how it worked. And uh, yeah, okay. So this is the end of my of this talk so thank you questions anyone so have you tried hopping since yesterday <laughs> yeah i tried but uh, i i will do update on this <laughs> in the next talk because uh, it's so short that uh, it would conclude it now. <laughs> um, does it only work with the USRP or also something like Blade RF or Lime STR? Mm, no, because there is no support uh, for stream tags uh, for them at, okay. uh, at this moment in GNU, GNU Radio. So I, I'm thinking about adding it to GR Osmo SDR or maybe someone else. We want to do it also. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. I think the root problem is that it's not, I'm sorry, it's not supported by Osmo SDR, Osmo Com source and sync for SDR. So we are not portable between software defined radios. I mean, the root problem why we don't support Lime SDR for now is that we uh, statically use uh, UHD source and UHD sync because they do support uh, RX and TX time tags, but uh, os generic Osmocom source and sync blocks that don't support this. D does it work using SOAP UHD then? Or? We didn't try, but... <laughs> 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 yeah, it okay. could, it's just not the interface, it's not exposed on the GNU radio uh, side. Okay. Nobody did it yet, but it can be done. Why, why, why did you uh, choose the radio over Osmo TRX? Because Osmo TRX already has support for... Yeah, yeah, but uh, ah, there, there was one uh, uh, requirement that I missed. I wanted to transmit only when I have to, because mobile station most of the time doesn't transmit. And uh, it's not supported uh, at the moment, I think, in uh, Osmo TRX. And, uh, this this was advantage and another thing is that i already known exactly how grgsm works and uh, osmo TRX was a bit a bit harder but probably not, th not that hard not to do that yeah i mean it's pretty simple and uh, works well it has all <coughs> Osmo T-Rex is written to be a clock master, which means you you have you do have to make some changes for it to synchronize to an external base station and track 
Uh, yeah, so it, it's not just you know sending the burst on the data interface and hoping it's going to work, right? Uh, yeah, but you, you remember that. Uh, of course, I remember. A lot of this, wor um, good part of this work has already been done. The no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm. Honestly, I would have written it with uh, Osmo TRX, but uh, um, it's just much more. It's not. And has much I don't know. Honestly, I've much I've less dependencies than uh, GNU Radio. Yeah, much less dependency, sure, but. Uh, I mean, honestly, I think it's, um, I was kind of impressed to see it work, and uh, I think it's a uh, um, that GNU Radio has come a long, a long way also to support that kind of use case of a burst transmission. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, building GNU Radio these days is not that hard, right? Uh, it's not like a few years ago. No. Uh, I mean, y you can even run it on uh, on Windows these days. And <laughs> yeah. I For me, a model. It's it's uh, possible. <laughs> I to to compile it on Windows. I I did it. It was painful experience, but yeah. Uh, 